I, I want us to continue with the discipleship and leadership evaluation. Uh, I said that uh, for God to raise leadership, for God to raise people who are ready to serve, for God to raise people who are ready to be used, these people must be exposed on teaching. Hallelujah. And whenever we fail to be exposed on teaching, we are prone to error. And we are prone to making so many unnecessary mistakes. Hallelujah. So for us to be a church that is going to worship God, to be used of God in a dynamic way, we need to be trained. Hallelujah. When we began this topic, we began how God started calling these men. They followed him. They were followers. They became disciples. They became friends. They became witnesses. And to appoint a dimension of apostles. So in discipleship, you are being discipled because you are ready to learn. If you are not ready to learn, you can never be discipled. Ask somebody next to you, are, are you ready to learn? Are you ready to be discipled? Many people in church want to grow without being discipled. And that one cannot bring any uh, impact in your life. Hallelujah. We have people who joined a church somewhere, and then they joined the worship team. They started singing the way others sing. When pastor says hallelujah, they also adapt that same tone, hallelujah. When pastor says glory, they, they also adopt that word, glory. When pastor says power, they adopt the word power. And then by virtue of remaining there time and again and again, the system or the, 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 the pattern of uh, how pastor speaks entered them and then they became like pastor and then they thought it was invitation. Hallelujah. Kuna watu, let me bring it in Israeli. Kuna watu ambao waliingia kanisani, hakuokoka, hakuna ujumbe uliubiriwa, haka uamini, ukambadilisha, haka mpokea Yesu Kristo, ya liingia to church, haka anza kukua kama wawo. Haka wana pastor akitembe hivi, anatembe hivyo. Are we together? Pastor akiwa akisema kuna nguvu za Mungu, anaanza kwa adopt hilo neno kuna nguvu za Mungu. Anapo mjuaji anaposema kwamba neno la Bwana linasema kuna nguvu ndani ya maombi, anashika neno la Mungu linasema kuna nguvu ndani ya maombi. So as time goes by, and then huyu mtu anakuja na realize ameokoka. In the little ajaokoka ali adopt. Hallelujah. So tunakuwa we have quarks in the house. Let me use the word quarks, hallelujah. So we have quarks in the house who adopted an environment. For example, ukichukua kuna huyu ndege ambaye anasikia unii, anaitwa nani? Kanga. Hallelujah. Kanga ni ndege wa mstuni, lakini unaweza mvuka wapi? Unaweza unaweza mkuza nyumbani. Si ni kweli? Kama unaweza mshika mapema and then umweke kwa kuku zingine. Si ni kweli? So huyo kanga ataanza kukaa na kuku wengine. Na hata akiona wale wa mwituni hata wafuata kwa sababu ashapata kuzoea mazingira ya kuku. Si kweli? But does it make it not to be kanga? Anabakia kuwa nani? Kanga. Hallelujah. So when we talk about discipleship, we have people who adopted the power of God is here. The power of God is here. The glory of God is here. The glory of God is here. And so as time went by, this man adopted the very same thing. And so they began to speak like pastor. They began to speak like bishop. They began to speak like reverend. They began to, to, to sing like a Noreen. And then he thought, because I'm singing like Noreen, now I am born again. Now I'm like Noreen. Are we together? So discipleship shall take you from a dimension of normalcy to a dimension of power. Hallelujah. So we need to come to a dimension where we are experiencing dunamis. What is lacking in church today is what we call, we call dunamis. The power. The inherent power. So when the inherent power lacks, now you will be in church a normal man. You will be in church a normal church goer. A person who goes to church to sing. A person who goes to church to dance. 
a person who goes to church to play a keyboard, a person who goes to church to say hallelujah. It's not about just shouting hallelujah. You can shout hallelujah from the morning, from morning hours to evening, and you receive nothing. Why? Because when you came, you only brought your experience of responding. Hallelujah. So the church has to go back to discipleship. Jesus did not have time to tell Peter today you will be my assistant and then James will follow you. No, he said I will teach them, I will disciple them. With the word discipleship, we, we say it means it, it, it comes from the word display. Hallelujah. Which means to train. Display, to train. So when you are discipled, let us read Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15. Because God does not want to raise leaders who shall not bring impact. God wants to raise pastors, people, ministers who shall bring impact and who shall build the body of Christ. What does he say in Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15? I will raise for you pastors after my own. Hey, shall we read? And I will give you shepherds according to my heart, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Hallelujah. So when God decides to raise a man of God for you, he will raise somebody who is not going to feed you with fallacy. Who is not going to feed you with what you, your eyes want to see. He is not going to feed you with what your ears want to see. He will raise somebody who after his own heart. He says, you know, about then he says, I have found a man after my own heart. Hallelujah. I have found a man after my own heart. Let me tell you, if you have not come to a dimension of meeting a man after God's own heart, you can be messed up easily. Hallelujah. You can be messed up easily. I will give you shepherds according to my heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Hallelujah. So when we talk about knowledge, he will feed us with knowledge. He's talking about Christ. Because when you read First John, First Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 30, Christ is our knowledge. Christ is our wisdom. Hallelujah. Christ is our righteousness. Are we together? He is our restoration. So I will give you, I will give you shepherds according to my heart, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Hallelujah. So, uh, what are you looking for? God wants to raise people who will serve you with knowledge and understanding. God is not after the big quorum of people who are in apostasy. God is after the saints who are gathered to glorify him. The saints who are, glor who are gathered, eager to learn, to receive and to know from him. Praise King Jesus. Let us read the same same Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 4. Je the same same Jeremiah chapter 23. No, before we go to Jeremiah 23 verse, can we read verse 16 of this chapter in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ? Verse 16 of this verse. Uh -huh. Then it shall come to pass when you are multiplied and increased in the land in, these, in those days, says the Lord, that they will say no more. The ark of the covenant of the Lord, it shall not come to mind, nor shall they remember it, nor shall they visit it, nor shall it be made anymore. Hallelujah. So when, when you continue, you will realize he's bringing a ship, where now he is taking us from a physical covenant, ark of covenant, into another realm, where by now the covenant is embedded in our hearts. Let us go to chapter 24 in the name 23 in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jeremiah 23, verse 4. I will set up shepherds over you who will feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, nor shall they be lacking, says the Lord. When God raises a good leadership on you, you will never lack. Many people, the Bible says in Hosea, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Why are they perishing for lack of knowledge? Because, let us go there, please. He's saying that. He says, my people perish for lack of knowledge because of the priests 
ukisoma hapo unapata the problem for people to perish in lack of knowledge it is the priest cause ndio sababu anakuja anasema i have rejected you as my priest the knowledge when god gives her chapter 4 verse 6 eh? my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge i want you to see who is causing the lack of knowledge in that context for us not to rule not jeremiah 23 my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge i also will reject you from being priest for me so who rejected knowledge the priest so the priest who should not knowledge who should embrace knowledge in order to deposit the very same knowledge now to the congregant to the congregation or to the saints they have rejected knowledge now god is telling them because you have rejected knowledge i will also reject you as my priest because you have forgotten the law of your god i also will forget your children hallelujah so the problem begins with the leadership when there is a problem in leadership when there is a problem of raising a problem of discipling people then the knowledge shall never be availed in you bwana hallelujah so why are you not embracing knowledge is it because the priests are not giving you knowledge hallelujah there are two ways on this matter either the priests are giving you knowledge and you are rejecting knowledge you want to serve god in your own way or the priests have rejected to give you what you should be given in churches today we have pastors who will preach there's a day i was somewhere and i saw a pastor preaching telling people it doesn't matter even if your boyfriend refused you god can bring another boyfriend boyfriend in church preaching at the pulpit at it does not matter if your boyfriend rejected you meaning that people have come to a place where they are even preaching promiscuity at the pulpit and it is normal and people are celebrating hallelujah people are celebrating and then on after service you find a lady crying like pasi 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 my boyfriend am in boots my boyfriend am in boots my boyfriend am in the boot ile tu jumbo luko mepana ni hivyo tu my boyfriend am in the boot pastor anamwambia don't worry god mungu analeta another boyfriend mungu analeta another boyfriend god never created boyfriends and girlfriends god created a husband and wife a man and a woman but it's so sad but the more they preach this gospel the more people continue to lack knowledge and the more they normalize sin many people are normalizing sin today are we together and this is dangerous so the church must be equipped with the right discipline so that you can have the fear of god so that you can understand when god is speaking and when god is not directing you to do according so you need to do things according to what god tells you to do hallelujah so he says jeremiah chapter 23 verse 4 let's go back there now i will set up shepherds over them who will feed them and they shall fear no more nor be dismayed nor shall they be lacking says the lord so when god raises the right and uh, the right uh, priesthood on a church the church shall be subject to learning and the church shall embrace the learning they will not come i know there are people here you come to hear your lord is coming and you will never hear that coming from me if you want your lord to come start in verse 10 hallelujah Oh your marriage is coming you will not hear that from me because God let me tell you don't serve God because you need a marriage let me tell you it will not work don't serve God because you know I've delayed to get married I've delayed to marry so I want I'm in charge so that God can remember me if you serve God because of your issues you are fake because the day those issues shall be settled you will forget God we are not serving god because we are desperate we are serving god because we ought to serve him whether things are working on us or not we ought to serve god in seasons and out of seasons we need to serve god hallelujah 
And that's why today in churches, kuna watu ambao wamezoea wachungaji kiasi kwamba when things are tough even in marriage, they will boycott. Hallelujah. They will boycott. Let me tell you, you can boycott for your wife, you can boycott for your parents, you can boycott for your children, you can boycott for yourself, but you cannot boycott for God. Hallelujah. Let me I want you to ask yourself a question. If God decided to boycott in one second against you, will you breathe? Then we are very foolish. We don't understand how we should be raised in the discipline. Let us be disciples so that we cannot lack knowledge. Manager's first. Praising Jesus. I wonder sometimes when you see the kind of believers and how they relate and how they behave. And then are these the very same people that Christ died for? Are they the same people that Christ really died for? A leader is a burden bearer. When you are being discipled, the purpose of being discipled is that you may understand how to bear burdens with the leader who is discipling you. Hata kwa nyumba wakati uliza mtoto, kuna wala ambamu kuna watoto hapa, wakati uliza mtoto, hui mtoto alikuwa ni kama bade ni kwako mwanzu mwanzu. Because usipo mtoto wa kitanda, atabaki. Usipo mtoto wa kinyezi, atabaki nacho. Usipo mtoto wa daya pa uweke ingine, atabaki hivo. Usipo mlisha hata kula atabaki hivo. Lakini wakati mtoto alinele kukua, na uwe na nile tuku mdisciple, na malezi, kumelea na malezi, kuna vitu mtoto wa yaza, ilifika mahali unanga kumambia fairenda washe biombo. Because, amefika mahali na zafaya nini? Anezesha biombo. Hini, inisha li hangi osha. Lakini sasa hii, unanga kumambia enda fanya nini? Enda osha biombo. Utamambia siku ingine, ukimaliza kuosha biombo, fanya nini? Fakia nyumba na umo. Siku ingine utamambia ukimaliza, enda osha biatu zako. So mtoto anahanza kujua. Kujua. So, hiyo discipline inako muingia, sasa kuna siku hauta ongea. Lakini, as long as umewacha kwa nyumba, when you come back, utapata walipika mpaka lunch, walikula, wakaosha biombo, wakaosha nyumba, na wakawasuza kwa TV, wana watch, ama wanafanya homework. Why? Kwa sababu mtofa alikro. In that discipline. Hallelujah. But now, wewe na wewe ni mkriso inagani hii, uko kalisani kutoka January mpaka January, unakumbusho kwa muamilifu kwa mungu. Unakumbusho mpaka leo tunakutoa daya pa. Wewe ni mkriso inagani huyu. And then, you are just in church calling pastor, hey, this is my pastor, you know, I'm proud of my pastor. Proud of me for what? For what? Because even even me myself, I'm not proud to be your pastor. Do you know some of you are here? I'm not proud to be your pastor because you are betraying me so big. But I cannot say catch fire. I continue praying for you, church. When I was with nation that I have been with you so many years, that you are still the same nation I was with, 2014. How can I be proud of you? I cannot. When I was with nation. Whoever come with some photos, 10 years ago, I'm talking about the end of September. Will you be proud? It is a, it is a serious matter. It is a serious matter. Uta, if, by the time you have been seven years, you have been with me back in Yeta Unifika. Unifika everywhere in every hospital, you have been with me back in Yeta Unifika. You have been with me back in Yeta Unifika. Like the spinal cord to work in Guinea. What is the first time? Hallelujah. Let me tell you. The, what is going to help you is not even altar call to pray for you here. What is going to help you is you to change the way of thinking. I can pray laying hands and hands na miku kwako and they will not change you until you come to a dimension when you say, I have come to a point of metanoia, a change of thinking. And that is what is disturbing many people. They don't want change of thinking. Hallelujah. Tell somebody a time to serve God with devotion is over. It is a time to serve God with knowledge. Are we together, somebody? Hallelujah. Knowledge. Knowledge. Because how can I be in church? The same, same man. The same, same man today. The same, same man yesterday. The same, same man another day. And when I go 
I went the same man. When I come on Sunday, I came the same man. It means in the process of discipleship, I learned nothing. I learned nothing. Hallelujah. So we need to learn something. And you, when you become a good disciple in the house, you will begin to bear what? Burdens. Burdens. Kuna wimbo wa bado kuna imba. Burdens unlifted at Calvary. Calvary. Burdens unlifted at Calvary. So, the same way burden a little at Calvary, it is the same way a burden is lifted from a pastor when a pastor disciples people in church. There's a difference. If you see that the more he disciples, the more he struggles, then he's raising the wrong people. Or the people he's raising don't know themselves, or the priest himself has a problem, he lacks knowledge. Hallelujah. You know, I have decided to do a different way of teaching on Facebook. Because initially I used to put exams, just short phrases. And then people can argue because they don't understand. And then I've just realized maybe they were not understanding. For example, when you just say, uh, you know, Jesus is 100% man and 100% God. So somebody won't understand. Hallelujah. Somebody will not understand because maybe it is just a phrase. But now when I take that teaching and detail it, when somebody reads, now they understand. So I have realized even many who are opposing, now they are understanding and even calling me to say, this is what you, you are supposed to be doing. Because now we are getting it. Are you getting it? Have you seen it? Why is this person? Why emoji and post emoji? So you will realize, <laughs> are we together? You will realize that in that way of teaching, there is somebody on Facebook who does not know me. I will disciple him or her much better than I do to you. Because you are used to me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Ukizoya ta mzee wangu kuna vitu za plan au utapata kwa mzee. Za maana lakini utapata. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Let us read Exodus chapter 18, verse 14 to 26. When Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did for the people, he said, What is this thing that you are doing for the people? Why do you alone sit and all the people stand before you from morning until evening? So Moses is overworking himself. There is a lot of work to be done and nobody can help Moses on the very same work. And Moses said to his father-in-law, that is Jethro, because the people come to me to inquire of God. Uh -huh. When they have a difficulty, they come to me and I judge between one and another and I make known the statutes of God and his God. The word I judge there is the word I execute or I teach. So Moses' father-in-law said to him, the thing that you do is not good. Mm -hmm. Next verse. Both you and these people who are with you will surely wear yourselves out. For this thing is too much for you. You are not able to perform it by yourself. This work is so big to you alone. Next verse. Listen now to my voice. I will give you counsel and God will be with you. Stand before God for the people so that you may bring the difficulties to God. Mm -hmm. And you shall teach them the statutes and the laws and show them the way in which they must walk and the work they must do. Meaning, do this. Have some people. Train them. Are you getting me? Have some people. Train them. Train them. 
train them, equip them. So the problem in church today, we just select. Pamela from today, you are a youth leader. Mama Brand from today, where will your mama Kanisa? Pastor from today, where will your Ango Kanisa? Are, are, are you getting it? But now here there is a process. Yeah, Elisa. But here there is what? There is a process. So he says, and you shall teach them the statutes and the law. We need to be taught before we are exposed on any mandate in the house of God. We must be taught. And that's why every man has to go back to a dimension of learning. Hallelujah. Because a good leader is a good reader. A good reader is a good leader. If you are not a good reader, you cannot be a good leader. Hallelujah. You must be good in reading for you to lead well. So he's telling him, teach them. We need to be taught. Hallelujah. You want a title, but you don't want to go through the process of being prepared for that title. I tell you, it's not about title, it is now about being taught to know so that you can execute that which you have known very well. And you shall teach them the statutes and the laws and show them the ways in which they must walk and the way they must do. Listen, you will realize the word they are using here is the word must, meaning that in a training in discipleship, it is a must. Whether you like it or not, you will not come with your opinion. In discipleship, God's opinion is final. Are we together? God cannot tell you, you cannot be a leader unless you are holy and you say, but you know, we can compromise on this. There is no negotiation because it is not you teaching God how to do his work. It is God to show you how he wants his work to be done. Are we together? Hallelujah. Unajua hata hii nyumba inapojengwa fundi si akona uamuzi wa kuamua hii nyumba vile itakaa. Sisi wenye sio fundi wenye nyumba ndio tunaambia fundi tunataka hii nyumba ikae hivi hapo kwa hivi. Sasa yeye ndio afanye. He, he will only implement our idea. We have the idea but we don't have the prowess to to do the idea. So we give him the idea and then he executes. His mandate, basing on the idea we gave him. Are we together? So, and you shall teach them the statutes and the laws and show them the way in which they must walk and the work they must do. It is a must, what you must do. He does not say what they should. He says what they must. So if God says you must be holy, there is no, but if, what if, no. You have to be holy. Because it is the school of ministry. People don't want school of ministry today. Hallelujah. They only want school of they, you know, they want to eat, you want to eat and want to be full. Next verse. Moreover, you shall select from all the people able men. So leadership is also for able people. Are we together? Don't struggle, don't struggle doing things you cannot do. If you cannot do what Jack and I am to begin a fight. Hallelujah. Uh, able men. We are talking about able men. When is the first Watch, don't try, you know. Watch, you know, you know, you know, you know, Unatanga <laughs> Hallelujah. We are in Christ. 
we are in a place and when you are in Christ you, are, you, you, you operate in dimensions of revelations hallelujah kwa nesho sikuwa sana wakutakataka kisikia kuna sika inauzwa mamavoko anakimpia na endo ya sika akisikia kujina kuna hani kachim kabla sike kuja na endo ya nini kutanga tanga kifagio na kukimbo ya musu Hallelujah. But now if you are in Christ Jesus, you will be well put because you are able and you understand the voice of the Father. Hallelujah. Because he has subjected you on this plane, he has trained you to understand his voice. Moreover, you shall select from all the people able men. Able men. You need to your friends. Hallelujah. And let me tell you God is going to bring able men here. Some of them are here already and God is going to add more able men who are going to serve in this place. Hallelujah. Such as fear God, able men and they also fear God. How do you want to be a leader who does not fear God? You how can you do you want to be a leader? That's good. Do you fear God? Do you fear God? How do you address your pastors? Talk to them ni kama tu umepasuka tu kuongea tu. Kuna mtu anataka kupasuka tu kuongea. Ale. Ale. Kuna watu wana speed gun na zamu. Anapoongea unashika mmm. Ale. Such as fear of God, men of truth. There is a process.